How's it going, internets? I hope you're having a wonderful day. It's time to get creative. It's time to get uh, imaginative. It's time to get inspired. It's time to do some animation. Today's inspiration is brought to you by one of my favorite all-time creators, and that is Jordan Mechner. He has done some amazing work. He worked with um, and wrote the, the screenplay for Prince of Persia. He did Karateka, I believe is how you say it. It's an older... Um, back in the DOS days and early um, Apple II days uh, game. He did The Last Express, and my favorite game probably of all time, Prince of Persia, which I will throw right over there a little clip of so you guys can check it out if you're not familiar with it. It's just such a great game, had such really great controls and tight controls, and really uh, such a nice, wonderful atmosphere. It was really kind of cartoony, and that cartoon realism that I find myself really drawn to. Um, he's done, he did a, another graphic novel um, with Luyan Pham. I believe I'm saying that right. If I'm not, definitely throw it down in the comments below if I, um, how you say it correctly. Um, and he did Templar, which was another one. Just some great stuff. All the stuff that he's really touched, I've really um, been a fan of. So I thought I'd share with you a couple of quotes from him as well. And this comes from uh, a great um, PDF that he released, which is now a book, but I'll throw a link in the information below to where you can download a little PDF, which was kind of like his journal as he was creating um, Karateka and Prince of Persia. And anyways, I grabbed a couple little snippets from that that I wanted to share with you guys too. Um, this first one I thought was kind of, well, I'll let it speak for itself. My night thoughts lately have been along the lines of, do I have it in me to do another computer game? Is this what I want to do? Can I do it? What if the code writing part of my brain is just atrophied? Will I fail ignominiously? Should I just turn to screenwriting full time? And I think it really hits on, and this was right before he started doing Prince of Persia, but I think it really um, hits on those points that all of us as creative people um, have. It's like, is it worth it? Can I do it? Is it something that I'm capable of? Just that kind of nervousness before you get back into it, that unsureness of yourself. Um, and then another one that I really um, wanted to get into that was a couple days later as one of his journal logs was, it doesn't really matter a whole lot what they think. I'm the one that has to do it, but it sure as hell won't hurt to have them enthusiastic. In a few months, I should have something to thrill them. And I think that's a great way to look at stuff. You know, don't worry about what other people are going to think. I mean, it's great if people agree with you. It's great if you have fans. It's great if you have, you know, people who just love and love your stuff. But the real thing is, at the end of the day, it's going to be you sitting down and doing and creating whatever it is. Whether you're a musician or a sculptor or a writer or a blogger or whatever. Bloggers and writers are kind of the same thing. Probably not, I'm sure I just offended like half of the writing community or the blogging community or whatever. So apologies, I'm, I don't write. Um, not that I can. Uh, okay, that's a total different tangent. But I think it's just great to have that, that ability to, to say like, you know, it doesn't matter what they think. It, you you want to thrill them. You want everyone to love your stuff and everything. But at the time you're creating it, just do it because you're passionate about it, because you believe in it, because it's something you want to do. All right, I think that's some great stuff. Again, definitely, if you've never played this game, I think it's there's a version you can grab on Android and iOS now. Do it. It's an amazing game. Um, I just I loved the old my Mac LC3 was probably the first. You know, I drew on that thing. I did everything. Played games on that thing. Ah, I love that computer. I'm kind of a giant computer dork as well. Um, so that being said, let's get into today's animation. I can sit here and watch this forever. I remember all these levels. Ah, okay. Um, this one is the fish tank rig from External Worlds, and I will leave that in the information below. It's a great um, little uh, set of different rigs you can grab. I think there was like 50 or 60 rigs in this whole um, download, so we'll definitely explore some more of these rigs um, if we end up liking this one as well, because it looked like there were some really fun and really creative rigs here. And again, I'll, I'll link all that stuff in the information below if you want to try this out. It's a free rig. Um, definitely give them credit uh, as well if you end up using it. And then we're also using Maya 2010 today. And if you're not familiar with this series, what we do is we give ourselves anywhere from... 
45 minutes to about two hours and frame range of about 48 frames give or take and see what we can come up with i've never used this rig before so we'll have the challenges that each and every rig presents and the challenge of creating something with a lot of the illusion of life in there we're going to have a little bit of instruction a little bit of just kind of over the shoulder and just talking overall um about the creative process hopefully there's something um for everybody here who's a uh, creative you can look into the creative process maybe get inspired or think of some new things or different ways to think about your creative process and uh, for those just beginning animation there'll be some tips and tutorials throughout and for those of you who are really polished and really advanced and are just amazing at least you'll feel like you have someone else every day who's in the art trenches with you and maybe that alone will get you inspired to not be afraid of the blank page or the blank screen in front of you and you just get out there and create because you're amazing and you can do it all right so that being said let's get into today's work so like I said, I've never used this rig before, and it doesn't look like there's a ton of controls, so we'll have to kind of check here and see what we can get out of this. One thing that I did want to try to do that I kind of experimented a little bit with, uh, to say that I've never used this rig before, I did just open it, but I did tinker around a little bit because I wanted to see if we could get the fish to move, and I was able to you just have to do it gym through the geometry movement, but I think that'll still still be able to get something out of there. I definitely wanted to get those moving though. I thought that would be fun to do to have a little swim throughout there. Okay. And maybe we'll rotate that a little bit. And I think for those arms, what should I do with the arms? I kind of want to keep them, I was debating whether I should hang them down. But I kind of like them being out. tinker a little here, see if what we like a little bit better. Do I like the arms being out like that, or do we like them hanging down? Let's hold them out. And actually, let's do it even more if we can. Let's see. Oh, I can translate them up a little more, too. Or we'll do that. Well, I think I actually will plug in a good, a strong value so they're evenly distributed. Let's do minus 0.1. And let's do a little bit of rotate. Go ahead and tip those. We'll do kind of, um, I don't know if you ever saw uh, a Christmas story, but uh, the little brother in that kind of has a big giant jacket so he can't put his arms down. So we'll kind of treat, I think, the fish tank a little bit like that where he can't really fully put his arms down, but he's kind of trying to, you can tell. So maybe we'll even, no, keep it where it's at. Okay. So let's go ahead and. Uh, Oh, I already got everything. Let's turn the manipulators off. And let's go ahead and key everything. Give ourselves 48 frames to work with here. And let's go ahead and set that. Did we get that? Come on. Here we go. Okay. And let's go ahead and save our file. I already actually did save this one right before, just while I was setting up the file. And let's do Control S then, just to make sure we got it saved. And let's get into um, our, the foundation for our walk. Let's 
go ahead and plunk it down. second okay sorry about that i'm just turning my manipulators off for some reason plug those back on so you can see that and we're just doing the foundation uh for this walk so that's going to be the feet and the hips because once you have those going you've got a good portion of your walk already set up Things even here, and our, we've got some balance there. It's not too far forward. And I think for this one too, we're gonna definitely want to do more of like a three-quarter for this one, just so because I think we're gonna get um, some bouncy arms. So I hope. That's kind of the idea I'm getting for this one. Just have like some up and down on those arms rather than a lot of swing. That's what we could do the other way. Let's just keep it at 36 since that's all working there. See if we can just go backwards for a step there. Just do it that way. Which there's probably an easier way to get into here, but since we got that going on, um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull 
both of those back a little bit. So that we keep our good amount of balance here. Let's see what that out. A little bit different, but at least it's a workaround so that we can get that since we couldn't really adjust those knees the way that we needed to. Okay. And like I said, there's probably an easier workaround, but it wasn't coming naturally to me, so this is one way to do it. Let's go back here, make sure we set our frame there. And that's uh, one thing that uh, I think is kind of a good challenge for doing these videos is I don't know what um, kind of challenges each rig is going to have. So that brings a new element, I think, to it. And let's do a little drag back on those feet. And we'll set that there, set that there. just want to get that passing position in those feet there. Okay, let's go ahead and watch that now, see how that's feeling. And this foot feels like it's rotated out a little too much. So let's pull that in a little bit. And let's put a little bit of rotate out in that knee. Let's go ahead and just pull everything back a little bit more. I just feel like there's something that's hidden there for some reason. So let's go ahead and pull the hips back a little bit. We'll figure out a workaround behind this. I'm not too worried about it. And then let's go ahead and pull uh, the feet back a little bit. Universally throughout everything.
usually this is a little bit faster, but since we have to kind of adjust a lot of stuff, um, it's okay. We'll get there. We'll get there. steps so we don't have like a big one in the middle one. So it's kind of like the heel and the toe just about touch there. So that means we'll have to pull this one forward a little bit. Usually that comes a little bit quicker, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and watch it now. Still got that going. Bummer. Two, three. Oh, let's just pull. Finally, I got that going. That took a little bit longer than usual. Let's go ahead and save our file now. Just for some reason, it was hitting that point, which means we might just be too far from there. But that's okay. We'll get it to work now. We want to do a little bit of up and down on the container here. Down. Up. And down. And up. This will help add some weight to those moves. And down. Even that out as well. So let's see. And actually, for some reason, I feel like doing the inverse of this. So we go down on the passing position. That seems more like what I want with this walk. So let's try switching that up. side to side. So we put the weight over on that foot as it's planted down, the weight over on this foot as that's planted down, weight over here, and weight over there. And my hand zeroed out again. Let's make sure it zeroed out at the beginning. So let's translate X, let's clean up that. So that's 
even on both sides. Thanks again everyone for watching and liking and subscribing to the channel. You guys are awesome. Hope you're enjoying this series. And let's do a little bit of uh, rotate these so it tips towards that. Like I said, normally it wouldn't go into negative frames, but for this, we'll make it work. Right? It's the same. And yeah, we'll zero that out there. Let's go ahead and watch that now. Okay, that feels okay. And then let's rotate to favor the planted step here. And planted step there. Fish tank face, woohoo! I like this rig, it's very cute. Kind of funky with those knees, but I'm sure there's a workaround that I could look up or contact or figure out what, uh, what it is. And if you know, let me know in the comments down below. But otherwise, I feel like that's working pretty well. Let's see if we can get the. Uh, seem like good. I thought maybe we could get in there and key some so that there'd be a little bit of bounce there. Uh, it doesn't look like it, so so you can get a little bit of movement in this bottom part of the fish tank. Okay, let's see if we can't opposite from the root. Use the hips as the chest and the root as the hips and see if we can't get a little bit of twist there. should have a little more side to side rotate here though.
let's go ahead and grab both of these, both of these shoulders here. Let's do a little up and down here. So let's go ahead and set them where we have there. And go down. Let's make sure we're just turning in line. So there's a little bit of bounce and drag in those arms, and then maybe we'll offset them as well, a frame or so. And again, I just really want that in Y, so make sure we don't have anything in X or Z. And we'll do a little bit here. a little off, so let's try going the other way. Maybe we won't do it. Maybe we'll just do it on the kind of the rotates then. Instead of having it bounce, so I'm just going to set it. Okay. Let's go to the other side here. Some reason when I'm focusing on my graph editor, it's focusing on the mainframe.
wasn't really going to do much swing, but since the other guy didn't really pan out, we'll go ahead and get it. up and a little more down on there. So let's go ahead and watch that now. Okay, let's go ahead and do this guy. A lot of my shortcuts aren't working right now, but that's okay. We can work without them. Let's do a little bit on the elbow here, key selected there, delete that. starting to work. Go in. We don't need to go that far out. So let's go ahead and pull that back. Let's go to watch that now. Just 
very solid one. Maybe not that far in either. Let's see. a little bit. Yeah, let's do a little bit on the hand as well. Key select it there. And delete that. And do that there. And down there. Switching that here. sure we're doing the same thing on both sides here. Just like okay. Let's go and watch that now. Okay. And let's go ahead and get rid of this guy. Key selected there. Delete this one.
Okay, sorry about that. I just want to polish up that curve. For some reason it wasn't going, but I think we got it it's working pretty well right now. So let's go ahead and take the hands and let's go ahead and um, delay them. hand a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to save the file. For some reason it's acting up a little bit here. And I'm going to go actually save it as a second version here. Just in case. Like I said, it's always good to save multiple versions and to save often just in case there's something that bugs out in your file. You never know what it might be. Just having a couple of technical issues with uh, Maya today for some reason, but that's okay. It's part of animating. These 3D animations, sometimes you're going to have uh, problems there. So we're going to grab all those and we're going to key select it there. And we're going to delete that. And let's go ahead and pull those in. side here. Do, 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 do. Okay. And it's important when you're um, working, even if there's technical glitches, to uh, continue to have a positive attitude. Even when you can't unslick things.
unfortunately we can't really get into our graph editor too much since the, we're having a few problems here technically. So I might have to come in and, and clean that up in a little bit. But we'll get the basic stuff working here. Okay, and let's do a little bit of thumb moves. We'll just have to get the variation in the fingers going at a different time here. Let's grab all those and key select it there and delete that one. So you can see that else. Let's do a little bit this way and a little bit that way just so there's a little variation in the thumb from the hand. So it's a timing and uh, posing are a little bit different. So let's see. It's working all right. And let's go ahead and key select it there and delete that and do a little bit of rotate. Zero that out and do rotate Y. Sure, restart of Maya and the computer as a whole will fix all that stuff, but back there and flip through there so get a little bit of swing in that thumb there. That feels pretty good. So let's go ahead and save our file and just go here since our shortcuts don't seem to be working right now. And let's see if we can do a little bit of animation on those fish. And pull that up here. So what we're going to do here, like I said, it's going to be, since there's not really a rig for it, uh, we're just going to have to get in here. find where the geometry actually is so that we can hopefully do this guy. So we're going to grab fish A and we're going to select everything here and key select it. We're going to go ahead and delete that and then let's go 12 frames and we'll rotate it around once. So we'll rotate around again. 24 and we'll rotate around again. 36 and we'll rotate around again. So let's see how that goes. Seems like it's going a little fast, so let's go ahead and pull that back a little bit. Rotation. There we go. Let's go ahead and watch that. There we go. That works pretty well. And let's grab fish B. And let's go ahead and key select it on everything there. And to put this. That rotate Y here, and we'll just do a slow rotate on this one, so maybe only like three turns. So let's see. Okay, so maybe I'll go back one turn. Let's do that fish C. Let's grab all of those and we'll key select it there. And we'll delete that. And we'll go to rotate Y here. And we'll do we'll just crank this guy up. We'll make him go pretty fast. Let's see. Maybe a little less. We'll go just one less. 
let's see. C, so let's find like six. And we'll translate that down. And there's six. So we'll translate that up so he'll do some dipping down and around. Instead of doing that, let's go ahead and pair it with me here. Let's go ahead and delete those. And let's just do that. Up and down. On 12s instead. is just going to be the wonky fish in here. fish just a little wonky here. So there's a little bit of hmm. actually let's go ahead and just do up and down like a bounce here, but let's do it on eights. Can we do that? Let's see here. Let's go down. And then let's see. Let's do a little bit of up and down on sixes on this one. So 
So everyone's got a little bit different timing just to vary up the fish in there. Go ahead and save our file again. And again, I am going to have to get in here and retouch up those fingers just so I can vary the timing a little bit since I'm not able to do that right now. So let's go ahead and show uh, let's the joints. Now show all. Oh, there's one that was, uh, yeah, there we go. Let's go ahead and key this so we can add a little bit of like kind of slosh. Just gonna I'm not gonna let us do that, huh? Okay. Go ahead and delete that. So let's go ahead and let's rotate bar. Right. Can we do rotate X? There we go, there's some slosh there. We'll go six frames from there, so that'd be two. Slosh the other way. Slosh that way. like there's some movement there. Stop that. There we go. Six. So that adds sort of that slosh effect to those to that water there. Okay. And let's turn everything off except for our nerve curves, nerve surfaces, and polygons. And let's hide our curves and let's go ahead and watch this. And aside from getting in and breaking up the fingers, let's go ahead and probably get in and revamp the feet a little bit more. Add some more life to that, to those feet. Okay, make sure and save our file again. And make sure it's still recording here. And let's show our curves again and let's get into these feet. little bit of change of shape in those toes. And key selected. And again, this shows you just a different way to, uh, we'll do a different way of animating and doing a lot more in the graph editor like I usually do, since we can't really use it as much right now. So let's see if that and we're definitely going to need to lift those steps up more now that we've got that toe more 
back in there so it doesn't feel like it's totally dragging so there's actually like kind of a lift because when we have the toe drag like this it makes the foot a little bit longer let's work that out so we need to make sure we raise it up more so that we get that uh, lift up that we need for that step Select it there, drag back, and lift it up just like so. A little bit of an optical illusion here. The tanks open from this side rather than how it really is. Okay. And let's go ahead and make sure we raise those steps up like I was saying here. And definitely pull that up a little bit more. Alright, I think that's working pretty well. Like I said, I'm going to definitely, before I post that up, get in here and tweak a couple things after I can restart everything. I think that's a pretty good uh, setup, so let me know down in the comments below um, what you guys think. If you end up doing a uh, version of um, using this rig in an animation of your own, definitely share it back so you can see all the amazing stuff you guys are producing. Um, but yeah, in the comments below, don't uh, hesitate to write any sort of comments, ideas, um, thoughts critiques, any kind of that, uh, that kind of stuff is, is definitely welcome. You guys are amazing. Keep being awesome. Let's take one more look back at where we started um, before leaving today. Um, my thoughts lately have been along the lines of, do I have it in me to do another computer game? Is this what I want to do? Can I do it? What if the code writing part of my brain is just atrophied? Will I fail ignominiously? Should I just turn to screenwriting full time? And don't let those negative things uh, get you down. But do recognize that all of us go through that same thing every day. All of us do, and you're not alone, and you're awesome, and you can do it. And it doesn't really matter a whole lot what they think. I'm the one that has to do it, but it sure as hell wouldn't hurt to have them enthusiastic. In a few months, I should have something to thrill them. And I think that's a great attitude to have. You're the one that has to do it, but try and make everyone enthusiastic about your work, and do the work, and thrill us because you can, because you're amazing. All right, that being said, you guys have a wonderful day. Let's turn our nerve curves off so we can watch this at a good, there we go. Maybe we'll zoom out a little bit more and angle up for a shot. Okay, you guys are awesome. Love you lots, and we'll see you tomorrow for some more creating, imagining, inventing. Uh, overall, just having fun creating new stuff. You guys are awesome. Keep being amazing. We'll see you tomorrow for some more animation.